I'm Nathan Evans, an associate in the commercial IP IT department here at Bristow's. This video is intended to be a very short introduction into the world of public procurement, um, aimed at suppliers wishing to provide goods or services to bodies operating in the public sector. Um, the UK government spends billions of pounds annually on the procurement of goods and services. So despite austerity programmes being in place, the public sector does offer a significant opportunity for IT suppliers, not just in terms of the rewards they will get from entering into the contract, but the opportunity to work in some really innovative projects. You may therefore be thinking about supplying to the public sector, um, and over the next few minutes I'll set out some of the regulations that may apply to your customer when engaging in these projects. Most large contracts in the public sector are likely to be subject to the Public Contracts Regulations 2015. There are exceptions where, for example, the, the value of the contract is below the, the relevant thresholds, and the relevant thresholds are on the screen below you now. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we'll assume that your contract is going to be subject to these particular regulations. The majority of the 2015 regulations, with the exception of certain provisions relating to electronic communications, came into force on the 25th of February 2015 and they replaced the 2006 regulations, which you may have worked with previously. The aim of the 2015 regulations is to achieve fair competition and access to the common market across the European Union and to offer a more flexible approach to procurement. The regulations also seek to codify many of the case law principles that are built up under the previous legislation. For example, the rule that material changes to contracts should not be made during their term and the test to apply when considering whether a contract change is material under the famous case of Pressy Text has now for the most part been codified into Regulation 72. As a supplier, it's worth being aware that in addition to the 2015 regulations, public bodies in the UK are subject to a raft of additional legislation such as the Social Value Act 2012 and a duty bound therefore to consider how their services might improve the economic, social and environmental well-being of the area in which the services are to be provided and many authorities are in fact best value authorities. So it's therefore a good idea to keep these principles in mind when structuring your bid. Turning for a moment to the regulations themselves, these are intended to govern the ways in which public bodies procure goods and services, and have been around in one form or another since the early 1970s and the establishment of the common market. They are intended to facilitate the treaty principles of the free movement of goods and the freedom to provide services. Generally speaking, public authorities are obliged to ensure equal treatment, transparency and non-discrimination within their procurement processes. I won't go into great detail on the differences between the old and the new regulations, but as an overview, the new regulations have sought to revamp some of the procedures for awarding contracts. For example, the regulations now contain new innovation partnerships and clarify which contracting authorities may call off on frameworks. They also permit pre-market consultations and have reduced the procurement timescales in order to facilitate leaner, shorter and a more transparent process. The new innovation partnerships may be interesting in the technology sector and potentially offer an alternative route to some of the restricted procedures. However, we've not seen one in action yet and think that they may be used where the authority needs to define certain IP rights at the outset or wishes to bring a product to the market that's brand new. It is also hoped that the new regulations will allow better access to the market for small to medium sized enterprises with an imposed simplification to the contents of pre-qualification questionnaires. You will need to consider the new regulations when dealing with contracting authorities. And contracting authorities include the state, regional local authorities and other bodies governed by public law. For a body to be governed by public law, it must usually be established to meet specific needs in the general interest and be financed for the most part by 
the state or local authorities or other public bodies. Examples will therefore include police authorities, fire authorities, academies and housing associations. As a supplier established for commercial purposes, your activities are not strictly subject to the regulations, but it is nevertheless important to have an understanding of them in order to ensure that your bid is compliant and dealt with fairly, and also to manage your own risk profile when contracting with the authority. If, for example, you are asked to implement a contract change during the term, then it is important to ask yourself the following questions. Is what we are being asked to do sufficiently described in our contract with the authority? If it is, does this change put at risk some of our, some of our other obligations under the contract, such as obligation to provide fair value? And if the change is not within the scope of the contract, does this change likely amount to a material change for the purposes of Regulation 72? These questions have real and significant importance because the risks to a supplier in being a party to a materially changed contract is that the contract or the amendment to the contract may be seen as an unlawful direct award capable of an ineffectiveness challenge. That is, the court effectively cancels the contract or the amendment to the contract. As a consequence, your business may be left with unrecoverable stranded costs and wasted time. These risks can be mitigated through indemnities or where appropriate collateral contracts and so it's important for you to seek advice when being asked to effect a change. When awarding contracts, contracting authorities may apply open or restricted procedures as they deem to be appropriate. For example, a competitive procedure with negotiation or competitive procedure with dialogue is likely to be appropriate where the technical specifications for the services cannot be established with sufficient precision at the time that the contract documents are issued. Each procedure varies and where you're being asked to participate in one of the procedures, the relevant explanatory regulations can be found within section 3 to the new regulations. For the most part, and irrespective of the procedure selected, each procurement will be largely based on the following key stages. Firstly, the contract will be advertised via an OGU notice, usually in the official journal of the European Union. There will be a pre-qualification stage, other than for open procurements, followed shortly by an invitation to tender if you're successful during pre-qualification. There may then be a dialogue or negotiation stage where those particular procedures are being used and possibly thereafter a phased deselection. After that time you'll be asked to submit your final tenders. There will then be a stage for evaluation of bids and an award decision made, followed by a standstill period to allow challenges to come in effectively, um, followed by completion of the contract itself. Turning very briefly to the use of framework agreements, these can offer a very convenient way to contract with public bodies, not least of all because the procurement timetables are usually significantly shorter. It is normal for multiple contracting authorities to be able to call off a framework agreement and therefore your access to more clients is significantly wider. There are a number of very useful Crown Commercial Services frameworks in the technology sector which you may wish to consider joining, such as GCloud 5 or 6, and very shortly GCloud 7, which deal with commoditized cloud services such as infrastructure, platform and software as a service and also specialist cloud services. In addition to the G Cloud frameworks, you may also wish to consider looking at Consultancy 1, Digital Services, Contingent Labour 1 and the Technology Services Framework. Although using a framework agreement will involve a shorter procurement timetable as I previously mentioned, Bear in mind that this is still unlikely to permit the authority to, to directly award a contract to you and there is likely to be a mini competition of sorts set out within the call-off procedure. To conclude this video, I will leave you with some key areas in the new, regula in the new regulations that you may wish to consider and to give some further thought when structuring your bids. Regulation 18.1 sets out that contracting authorities must treat all economic operators equally and without discrimination and act in a transparent and proportionate manner. Regulations 88 to 104 cover applications to the court and set out your rights where you believe that the contracting authority has not acted appropriately. 
Certain terms will always be implied into the contract. For example, Regulation 113 says that payments of undisputed invoices must be pay paid within 30 days, irrespective of any other provision within the contract. In addition, there are other implied terms which allow the authority to terminate the contract where the contract is subject to an ineffectiveness challenge and therefore it is important to set up what happens to your stranded costs within the, within the body of the contract. As I mentioned previously, if a contract is to be modified, then you need to carefully review Regulation 72, as this regulation applies to changes made to the contract during its life. If your business wants to cooperate with the contracting authority's pre-market engagement, which is now permitted under the new regulations, then that's great and please feel free to do so, but always bear in mind that any information that you provide to the authority during that engagement may be openly given to your competitors. And furthermore, intellectual property rights that are created during that engagement are likely to vest with the authority. Finally, just be careful with your use of subcontractors, as often a, a change to a material subcontractor can amount to a material change of the agreement. Therefore, where you know the subcontractors that you're going to use, then make sure that all of them are listed within your bid and make sure that that list then flows into the relevant schedules of the agreement. Finally, Smaller value contracts that aren't subject to the full raft of regulations also need to be advertised and you'll find these contracts on the Contracts Finder page, which is a portal provided by the Cabinet Office. A link to this service will appear below. Well, this brings us to the end of this introductory video and hopefully it's provided you with some useful information. Working with the public sector, as indeed is the case in any regulated environment, is not without its challenges. However, with careful management, the risks can be offset with great rewards and, as I said previously in this video, there is the opportunity to work on some really, really interesting and innovative projects with some really driven people. Um, so good luck and do get in touch if you need any help.